So here they come, the Warriors will be greeted by an almighty roar. The Sydney Football Stadium, it's been a happy hunting ground for the Warriors. An incredible record, really. They've lost only one of their last eight games here. And those people in the bleachers, they're hoping that this isn't the second they will lose in the last nine. So the raging hot favourites to win tonight. Manly, they fall in behind their captain, the number seven, Matt Orford. Against the Warriors, they've won four of their last five games. And they haven't been beaten by the Warriors in Australia since 2005. They come off that week's break. Is it the dreaded week's break? It was for Cronulla. Now the roar for Manly. Warriors standing in the middle of the ground as if to challenge Manly. I haven't seen that before. It's almost a silent harker, isn't it, Ray? Something like that, a motionless harker. Just as threatening. They've done it in each of their semi-finals so far. Well, of course, I wasn't there for the semi-final the other day because I didn't have a passport, so I'll have to plead innocent. Well, they did it in Melbourne. They clapped the Melbourne side onto the field. They were the home side in New Zealand, so they ran out second, didn't get a chance to do it, but tonight they have clapped Manly onto the field as well. 14 times Wiki and Price have played together in the front row. Orford will become the first Dallier medalist player of the year and a premiership winner in the same year if he can win next Sunday. Since Peter Sterling did that in 1986, Shane Hayne, the referee, we're underway. Who is going to the grand final out of these two? Manly first the kick receivers and it's Brent Kite who plays the ball now for Glenn Hall tackle two of the night made by Madalino and Price and Luck now it's gone on to Josh Perry who won a premiership with Newcastle in 2001 Matter running almost at will down the short side early to the 40 metre line now for Anthony Watmo, deceptive pace. Up towards halfway, Manly about to complete their first set and completing it nicely off the boot of Lyon. It'll probably find touch, it does. Great kick by Jamie. Yeah, the option kicker there. And it's been very good for Manly, for Jamie Lyon coming back into the side after missing a number of weeks through injury. He was outside his own 40 there, but he's picked up good field position and a physical start from both teams. Nice set of safe attack from the Seagulls. And the Warriors, apart from allowing a, a bit of space down the far side, strong in defence. So the Warriors the ball get in first before we keep defending it before it gets in. Yeah. the southern end. Scrum win. to the 20 metre line. It comes across for their player of the year, Mannering. It's just inside the 30 metre line. As Rapati, who's been very good through the finals, is tackled now just inside 40. Played back for Henderson, swept on to Price. Price runs at Jamie Lyon, and it's left to Glenn Stewart to make the tackle on Stephen Price. Then Michael Luck and now Ruben Wicke. He's put down inches into Manley's area. He played centres for Canberra in 94 when they won the grand final, Ruben. And this kick is going to find the line. Stephen Price came on for Canterbury as a replacement player that day, back in 1994. That's Michael with the, the kick successful for touch. Yeah, it's a lovely reply by the Warriors. Whatever you can do, we can do also. 
Manly worked it up. Jamie Lyon found touch with his first kick. The Warriors replied in kind, which will settle their nerves. And the crowd are really into this game early. You can hear both sets of fans chanting. Tremendous atmosphere here. Blood coming from the forehead of Luck. The lock forward for the Warriors. Stephen Bell tackled on the 10 metre line. Watmo runs at the lock forward and Luck puts him away with Henderson. They can't put him to ground. And then Henderson stays at front marker and makes another tackle on Bell and his opposite number. Watmo tries to catch a penalty from Henderson this time. And Henderson, the number nine, in three tackles in a row. Played on the 30 metre line. Ballon works a play with Hall. And Hall is brought down on his own 40 metre line. Manly v the New Zealand Warriors. The kick heading for the dead ball line. 20 metre optional for New Zealand. Off the boot of the seven, Matty Orford. Out the back, Michael. Yeah, Michael Luck got Out opened back, up last week, and those head wounds are very, very difficult to, to stem the flow of blood. And already, Michael Luck has been sent out the back because the blood is still in evidence. More tape comes out. Tackling machine, we put his head in plenty of places with a chance of opening it. Second time in the game. In its very early stages, they've used that advice. First play on the new set. Henderson goes to Price. And Price has taken the ball down to the Manly 40 metre line. The Warriors then, their turn. This is their second set. As it goes away from Wick and goes recklessly behind Tate. And eventually it's Matt I who dives on Brent Tate. And he's tackled on five. They go wide over to the seven Nathan feed. His kick is going down to Williams. He puts a back edge of the boot on it. Oh, and a chase for the ball by the Kiwis. Gives them six more. 12 out from the line. Here's uh, Brent Tate. They're going over to Witt. They're going over to Mannering. They've gone away to the wing three quarter. It's gone back in. It's taken by Bell for Manley. Oh. I thought they were home for sure. Vatavai had the ball knocked out, only had to put it down. Unbelievable defence at the end. Awful bad luck for the Warriors. This is a kite. That was unbelievable. Perry taking the shoulder of Matalino. Unbelievable. Superb work from Nathan Fiend to get the football back. Williams, contact. With Vatavai, he can't believe it. Manly, they dodged the biggest of bullets. He can't believe it because it's unbelievable. With a kick, rolling down to Vatavai. Straight up the middle goes the big fellow. And he's 15 metres away from his own line. This is Wade McKinnon. Reinstated to the team after a three-week suspension. Lance Ohio comes off the bench then. Stephen Price stands and unloads for Kirk. And Aidan Kirk, 35 away from his own line. And Aidan Kirk is the right winger for the Kiwis. He's on the left-hand side of the field. So merely now, no, they can just jam up in defence. They're not going to be spreading the ball out to that wing while he's not there. Ball goes to Fien. And Fien rakes a kick across the ground. Five or six metres in from touch. And it's with Brett Stewart, the full back. He's put down and held by Mannering in a dominant tackle. It's gone away to Williams, and Williams is hit hard by Wiki. Just outside the 30 metre line. Williams undoubtedly saving a four pointer for New Zealand. Seven metres from halfway, then. Channel 9's live exclusive coverage of the second grand final qualifier. Melbourne there as Jamie Lyon stabs a kick down in behind Vatavai right back in the corner they put a ring around him he runs into Bell, he runs into Williams Glenn Stewart and Jamie Lyon and then it's away from Rapati out in front of McKinnon and McKinnon will be made to play the ball on his own 20 metre line needed to be sharp then Wade McKinnon it was a poor pass from Rapati he did well to take in and Steve Price again trundles it forward 
Just short of the 30. Takes three to get him down. Game 299 in first grade tonight for Stephen Price. It would be a wonderful way to celebrate 300 in a grand final, would it not? Considering he missed that grand final with the knee injury in 2004 prior to joining the Warriors. Opportunity to run one to the left, to the right-hand side, sorry, if they have a look. Feed. Goes very, very high with a midfield bomb. The jump is on. It's come down to Stewart. There should be space down the left side. McKinnon goes across, and uh, Brett Stewart comes back in field. To be tackled by McKinnon and Fiend, but Manly have got New Zealand on the back foot. What most pass ill-directed, but under pressure. Tight. Wonderful counter-punching by Manley. Here's Stewart. Just inside the 30 metre line. They're not sparing the horses, these two teams, are they? They're flat out, right from the opening whistle. Shots I play, line. A deft little kick. Bell is after it, but it's been cleaned up by McKinnon. Well, he saved the day on two occasions now. Wade McKinnon made the tackle on the far side on a flying Brett Stewart. And then he had to hightail it across this side of the field to defuse that little kick through. That was Brett Stewart taking advantage of a, of a good bounce after a contested bomb. There's McKinnon, had help from Fiend. And then he's over on this side now with Jamie Lyon looking for David Williams in behind Vatavai. McKinnon again first there, first game back for three weeks. Kiwis starting from beneath their own uprights. And this is Glenn Hall taking it back to be tackled just outside. The Warriors 30 metre line and a chance for Manley. Second tackle is with Watmo. Short time, make it. Possession all but even. All for the couple of shows. A second man for Lyon, for Bell, for Williams. And Williams down the right side is picked up by Witt. Seven metres away. Ten now. Orford onto Stewart. Stewart onto a flying hole. Brent Tate or urgently calling for reinforcements on the right side for New Zealand. That's where Manley's gone. Orford steps a kick in. The pressure was in Turks, but he bats it over the dead ball. Lovely football. Great football from both sides. Tremendous attack by Manley. They've slipped straight into their rhythm. Some nice plays on both sides of the field. And equally good is the Warriors' defence, who have counted and got across to cover up dangerous situations. Watch the way they're all scrambling across at the back of the ruck there to get across and get Williams. Up they come and attack in the middle of the field. Up they come, make their hit, and then they regroup, get ready for the next play. The grubber kick from Orford is perfect, and Kirk has the knock it dead. Great footy. So again, Manley, with Perry. Orford towards the centre of the ground. This is tight. Just inside the 20. And a penalty goes to Manley. He's still driving with the legs, mate. Just release now. And a very interesting decision come out here for Manley. They've got on a roll here, two restarts. I think they'll go for more than the two, and that's what they're doing. Excellent decision making in defence from the Warriors, but they need to find some now. I think an early interchange for the Warriors, maybe earlier than they would have liked. So the tap is taken by Ballin. And Hall it is that gets it to within two metres. Manley with a tremendous opportunity for Kite. But again, it's strong online defence from the Warriors. Now for Orford, and here is Stewart scoring his 91st try. Seven tries in his last five games coming into it. That is his 91st try in 111 games. Well, we saw Cooper Cronk put it on the in the right position for Israel Folau last night. Matt Orford has done the same for Brett Stewart in this instance. A great pass, the build-up of pressure. They turned down two points because they could sniff more than two. Orford comes across field. The Warriors have come up a little bit staggered and the pace of Stewart puts him through.
can't he find the line? We say hello and welcome to our relays taking us over in the United Kingdom and in New Zealand. Down there through Sky Sports. Down across Europe and Asia. A lot of Australians watching this down through there. And this is the, the try scoring freak from Manly. Well, there he is. He just makes a habit of it. Being in the right place at the right time. Brett Stewart, the number one for Manly. Here's Matt Orford. The man who set him up beautifully. 16 in from touch on the western side. 20 metres out. He's hooked it away. No goal off the boots of Matt Orford. Matty Jones. Yeah, Rabbits, the attacking shapes are merely. You're really starting to worry the Warriors early. First of all, Matty Balance sort of jumped out and put a play on, and Orford just come on the back of it. And look at Stuart Wemo. He knew where the space was. Jerome Rapati just couldn't summon the energy to close the hole. Merely in front early. So something had to give. As the manly mascot celebrates in front of the packed Eastern stand. And this is Brent Kite. They've got manly fans away to the left of your screen on the eastern side and then on the other side of the halfway they've accommodated the kiwis his ballon in the game ray this game's so much about possession the roosters had it all in the first half last week the warriors a glut in the second and they ran away with it man they've had a lot of football early in this game line decides to run it to glenn stewart and Stewart looking to get rid of it, he does. He finds his brother who got a pass away. It came away nicely for Manly. Albeit fortunately, Mavai gets the ball to Robertson. Robertson tries to centralise and McKinnon makes the tackle. 25 out, five tackles gone for Manly. Here they come again, Watmo away to Orford. Orford puts a kick in behind Witt. Witt's hoping it'll go, hoping it'll go, it does. 20 metre. 20 metre restart. Well, Michael Witt knew how important that ball was to go dead. His teammates are out on their feet. They've had the ball on four occasions, the opposition into double figures. Ten uses. And they would have been hard-pressed to keep Manly at bay again, forced to do another set of defence. This is Kirk. And now Henderson, who I saw clutching at the sternum area just a little bit earlier, but he... He seems to be okay. Stephen Price with good meters. Just up the right hand side of the ruck. Reaching halfway. Henderson on the feed. Feed back to Matalino. Matalino will play the ball 40 meters out from the Manly line. As it goes left side for Ritt, and he dummied outside, went back in. And he picked up Mannering, who's found McKinnon. And they're 35 meters up from the line. Nine uses. As Peter pointed out for Manly. And uh, this is the fourth use of the football for New Zealand as Stewart is allowed to fly high and came down with no football. Chance for the New Zealanders. The fullbacks are very, very keen to leap for the ball because they know they're protected by mid air tackles. And it was probably a kick he didn't need to leap for. He would have preferred to keep his feet on the ground, but he goes up knowing they can't challenge him while he's in the air. And that causes the fumble. If he had his time over again, I think he stands his ground and makes a simple catch of it. Good chance for the Warriors. So Henderson standing out of his scrum at the back. And it's been lost here by the Kiwis. Just have a look at that, Clarky. Referee Shane Hayne wants him to have a look at it, but... The way the Warriors have reacted, I think that it's just a fumble from Young Witt. Unfortunate on tackle one. He's got the ball available. Whatever happens from now doesn't matter. I know that there's probably a manly hand there. But he's got the ball available to pass. For mine, that's fair game. It has to be. There's no deliberate intent from Brent Kite on that occasion. So it's play on. Nice and still, boys. Manly feed. Good decision. Orford serves in the scrum back 
10 meters out from his own line, and this is Bell. The two big guys for Manly a couple of years ago from Melbourne, Steve Bell and Matt Orford. Now here's Glenn Hall giving a don't argue to Nathan Fien. I saw his head go back on his shoulders, and Fien is back in the back play, not well. Here's Watmo. They're just playing the game a little too fast for the Warriors at the moment. Manly, their speed is good, and the Warriors are really starting to struggle around the play the ball area. They need some possession. Here's McKinnon. 4 0 in favour of Manly. And almost a quarter of the game gone. At the end of the rainbow is a shot at the 2008 Telstra Premiership. Ricky comes off. Here's Brent Tate. Rapira has gone on. And a penalty goes to the Warriors. Just outside their own 20 meter line. It's against Glenn Hall. That's what they wanted. And now what the Warriors need to do is apply a little bit of pressure at the other end of the field. They need to, to kick out here, complete a good set of six, and try to set up camp down the other end of the field and stay there until they come away with points. So Stephen Menzies is donning the headgear. Henderson taking the tap. Rupira's first touch. 40 meter line you see is on the manly end. Henderson goes short side, turns it in for Madalino. Toyota Cup side for the benefit of our New Zealand viewers. Beaten on the bell by Brisbane. So Brisbane will play Canberra in the Toyota Cup final. Here's McKinnon using the expanses and he gets it out to Vatavai. The party now for Price. And Price gets it to about seven meters from the line. Tackle five. And what have they got, the Warriors? Michael Witt, the kick across. Looking for Kirk. Up they go. Kirk had a, a chance at it. But Matai is flying down the left side. Again, they counter punch. Matai clutching at the neck. A tackler tried to. The second dig at him and get him out of the sideline and looks like he might have injured his neck a little bit. Here's Jason King. And there's Madai getting some attention from a trainer. Ballon shows it, turns it back in. And the ball is lost for Rapira to come away for the Warriors. Well, Steve Madai's had a troublesome neck. It, it had actually cleared up and the shoulder was a problem for him. But that second attempt to tackle that you pointed out got him in an awkward situation. It's Henderson now finds meters up the middle. And 20 of them. Glenn Stewart was in the back play a little bit dusty. He's back on the defense line now. Here's Tate taken by Orford and put away. With assistance from Watmo. McKinnon is the acting half. First receiver feed. The 17 is Logan Swan. His last game tonight, if beaten. Now for Michael Witt, now for a party, now for Valentine, and the big fellas tackled. Inches inside the touchline and inches away from the try line. The pass back to Michael Witt, he goes across again so accurately. McKinnon goes up and comes down with it, gets it away. Fiend puts it on the boot again. It's taken by Robertson. And Michael Robertson is tackled for Manley. Well, it was billed as one of the great personal battles and, and it's developed that way already. David Williams up against Manu Vatavai. He's done a great job, Williams. Almost one-on-one -on -one here, close to the line. And he grabs him up high, spins him around, and then the help came. The battle between the wolf man and the beast. On the 30-metre line, Manley's in. That's Glenn Stewart. This is Stephen Bell. And Swan came on for Matalino. Players towards halfway, western side, now towards the centre for King. Brent Tate comes away from the field of play. As Orford gets a kick in. It'll bounce up for McKinnon on his 10. 
Menzies there in 17, Ballon in nine, penalty Manly. Penalty New Zealand, I should say. So they get an easy ride away from the danger zone because of that, and it was Steve Menzies who was penalised by referee Hayden. They're not leave his best first touch coming into a game, but they need a soft out here. The Warriors they are really struggling out there. A lot of tired bodies. They just need to somehow conjure up consecutive sets as Manly did earlier in the game. Coach Cleary, nine times in 10 seasons as a player to the finals and now two times from three years as a coach so his record is good mannering is with the ball for the warriors king came on for kite this is Rapati, and not really going anywhere but offering it back and down to mannering and again they go nowhere Price always makes meters always attracts two and three and they normally have the Dickens of the time pulling him down. Henderson behind Luck. On to Witt. Torpedo pass away for Fiend. Fiend for Swan. And Swan will play the ball 35 out from the Manly line on five. McKinnon for Witt. And again, Witt goes to the air. It's gone down towards David Williams. It's uh, been allowed to bounce, and it bounces into two. That was a pretty poor set of six from the Warriors. I reckon they spent four tackles pretty much on the same blade of grass. By the time they went in field, Manly were waiting for them and a misdirected kick and a, and a bounce over the sideline and they get a little time to pause and think about that and just regroup. Let's go, boys. Join in. Come on. There's not Come much Steve. in it at the moment. When, when Manly have got the ball, they have the ability to play faster than the Warriors. But the Warriors aren't out of it yet. Here's Bryant. Another of the front rowers. And here's Stephen Menzies. Second highest try scorer in the history of the game. And if Manly go to the grand final, he will equal, if he's healthy, the most number of premiership games played at the top level. Set by Terry Lamb at 349 is the bar. That's King. Ballon, Orford, Glenn Stewart to the halfway line. Always represents a danger to Stewart, no matter where he is on the field. But when he gets out wide, he's very hard to, to contain. The charge down is fielded by his brother Brett, who got the only try of the match thus far. And there's 20, 26 minutes almost gone. This is Aidan Kirk. Reeled down by Brett Stewart and Anthony Watmo. McKinnon tries to beat his opposite. He does. Comes to the forwards. Tries to run around them. Then they come in and they put him down. They put him down. A couple of the smaller fellows, Orford and Matai. Now for Logan Swan. And he's turned over and put on his back by Jason King and Matt Ballon, who remains unsigned for Manly. Now it's on to Vanavai. And Peter mentioned David Williams doing a great job to contain Manu. He's really left some imprints out there already in the game. The bounce friendly for Brett Stewart. He's out to his 20. He's met by Henderson and Luck. And he's put down in the centre of the ground here at the footy stadium. Now for Michael Robertson. Logan Swan making the tackle in the middle of the ground. It was a good kick from the Warriors. They didn't wait until the last, got it over the head. Steve Mattai just short of halfway. Took a while for Manly to get back. Orford looking to make a break through the middle. It almost presented itself, the gap, to the 40-metre line now. And Watmo is there. Took a short pass. Took the ball on the end line. Tackled on the 30-metre line. Warriors into the ground. It's gone to Walford through the hands to Lyon. Right foot kick, and he's chasing hard, but it's gone into touch. As we take a break back in a moment. And to our friends in New Zealand taking our telecast again, a very warm welcome to you. 
fact, I was told by some television people here during the week that these segments where we're taking a break, you stay with us. I'm just wondering and trying to recall what we've said in those breaks. I hope it was palatable enough. Apologies if it wasn't. That's the first play from the scrum that was won by the Warriors. That pass might be suspect out to Vatavai from McKinnon, who has been allowed to go, and the big fellow again tries to roll over the top. <laughs> On the 40 metre line, Ohio is out there in 14. Price is up to the halfway. Gus. They come from everywhere when he gets the ball, big Manu. Here's Ohio, who starred in that match in Melbourne. Now Fiend, across for Mannering. First team in the history of the McIntyre system to beat the minor premiers from position eight. Here's the kick by Fiend. Nicely judged, it's going to be cleaned up. And he's put a foot on the line, it's out, it's a line drop out. Well, you've got to congratulate the Warriors on their last 10 minutes of play. They were really struggling there at one stage. Manly had all the running, playing fast, and they had them off the bit. But they've steadied the ship. Their football hasn't been great, but at least they've controlled the ball, and now they've struck a blow of their own. They've got a repeat set. Can they turn this into points? And if they do, it's really game on. So Logan Swan taking the line drop out and running it immediately. At players one and two on the left, Robertson and Matai. This is Rukira. And Rukira will play at 10 metres out from the line. And they're in a great position right where they are. As Big Price gets it to two metres. It's 4 nil in favour of Manly. Ohio on the feed. He double pumps and holds it. Tackled eventually by Menzies. Now Ohio's gone to ground. Bell dives on it for Manley. Oh, oh. oh dear. Just a little bit of miscommunication there. They rushed it. There was a real opportunity with the quick play of the ball. Pass didn't go to hand. Manley dodged a bullet. McCarty making that tackle. Inside the 20 on Glenn Stewart. This is Bryant. And he's inside the 30 metre line. Jason King. He had a lot of game time in that session anyway. Here's Matt I. This is a solid game of footy, Roberts. Six a game. Menzies to play the ball. Tackle count has been nullified. This is Watmo. Penalty goes to Manley. He's pointing at Rapira. Hang on, back here, mate. Price and Fiend. And they didn't release early enough. Well, what they've done here is they had a great opportunity at Manley's end of the field. Hold here. They stuffed it up a little bit and turned over possession. Then they've given six again. Now they've given a penalty. So it's the triple whammy. They're up the end with a chance. Now they're going to be back down defending their own line. I hate those triple whammies. Mark Bryant playing the ball in the middle of the ground on the 30 metre line as Josh Perry shoulders his way up. And the 15 is out there. Tua Mavavi. Just outside the 20 metre line, and they come to the right side for Ballon to dummy to Menzies, and he gives it the next time to Glenn Stewart. And Glenn Stewart is held by Rapira, but they're only 10 metres out, Manley. As it goes away to Menzies, goes second man, off of the line, puts a little kick in, taken by McKinnon, he'll be grounded. Line drop out, Manley will get another set. It'll be their sixth or their 19th of the game. And it's a quadruple whammy. Turned the ball over, gave him six again, gave him a penalty. Now they concede the line dropout. This is how momentum shifts in a game. You make a mistake, sometimes it's ten minutes before you get the ball back. It's not the first time Jamie Lyon has looked to drill one through. He did it this side for David Williams. That time he was trying to get in behind Aidan Kirk. Again, McKinnon, well positioned. And Michael Witt, it's an excellent dropout. 
55 meters later, it's taken by Orford. And this is Perry. 15 from 18, Manley. 11 from 14, the Warriors. That statistic is starting to balance out. When Stewart scored, Manley had by far and away the better of it. Now it's away to Orford. What a run of decoy. Stewart got it away. Manley got it on. Robertson for the corner. But McKinnon snaps him. And Manai is injured in back play. It comes from Watmo. Goes to Warford. It's gone to Bryant. Got a miracle ball out to Warford. On the line, on to Stewart, on to Menzies. And that's why, that is why, he's the second highest try scorer in rugby league history. He puts himself on the back end so many times. And then he finds this golden area in behind the try line. And it was on the end of perfect execution by his teammates. The only downer is that man, Steve Maddai, being injured. Everybody caught the ball, passed it at the right time, and took advantage of the overlap. This is a great offload from Bryant. It got the players in the opposition defence to come in. And when they came in and the ball was kept going, Steve Menzies only had to catch and place the ball over. Thirty-four years of age. Steve Menzies, Stephen Maddai clutching at his right shoulder. Get down there, must kick. Good organizing. Alford will take the shot from about 21 meters out and six meters in from touch. Back live at the Sydney Football Stadium, Nines live and exclusive coverage of the finals of 2008. Menzies the try scorer. Yet another one. Orford again has hooked it. Just sailing away to the outside edge of that right upright. There's the try scorer, Laurie Daly. Yeah, when your staff teams of the football and earn repeat uh, sets, the opposition become fatigued, and then it's up to your ability to stay composed and execute, and merely have done just that. It was lovely hands. Jamie Lyon drags a couple of defenders in. Glenn Stewart's got terrific hands on that right edge for the Manly side. And the man they call the Beaver was able to score Manly's second try of the night. Debuted in 93. And Des Hasler was the half-back at Manly that year. And Ivan Cleary was the full-back. Yeah, quite remarkably, Ruben Wicky debuted just three weeks previous to Steve Menzies back in 93. Know that there tonight. One of them playing their last game in the NRL. Glenn Stewart is tackled 22 from his own line. 20 metre line in from the western side. As Ballon is tackled just beyond the 30 metre line. Now to Mark Bryant, who kept the, the kettle boiling, so to speak, with a tremendous pass. It was a great pass by Mark Bryant, a native of Kudamundi. Les Boyd territory. Ruben and Steve Price, the front rowers, the starting props. Their 15th match together. Combatants in the 1994 Grand Final. Played by McKinnon. Just outside the 30 metre line. Kirk. It's 8 0 in favour of Manley. Orphans had two shots for 2 0. Now for Swan. And the Warriors just need to be patient. 8 0 at half time is not such a bad result given the flow of possession. They can work with that in the second half. They've just got to concentrate they don't get too frantic in the last three minutes here and give up another opportunity to Manly to extend the lead. Chumavadi pushing Josh Perry away like he was a halfback. Now Witt goes high again down to Williams who leaves the ground and Vatavai lets him do that and waits for him to land. Yeah, 8 nil at half time the Warriors, that's manageable. And with all due respect, Manly have had a couple of good bounces go their way. Three or four occasions, including the no-try to Vatavai in the opening minutes. The Warriors will hope that that turns around in the second 40. 20-metre line. Brian again. It's proving strong. Now it's gone to Orford. Turns it in for what moves? A desperate tackle by Michael Lowe. It had to be made, and he made it. 
Now Vadovar. Passes long. Goes across to McKinnon. And oh, here comes Menzies cutting McKinnon down. Little danger signs here for the Warriors. You can just see them looking at the clock, hoping this last two minutes goes quick. Play by Fien. This is Rapati. He put his nose through and then took a look. Nobody with him. They were getting ready for the next play. Tua Mavavi. Making good ground, the Warriors. His Tate taken by Menzies. Ball loose. Ho Haya picks it up. This is a that I haven't seen too much of. Stephen Menzies without headgear. It snapped apparently, the, the chin strap. Here's Robertson. Taken by Rupira. One and a half minutes to go. David Williams. There's the Beaver without the headgear. Short for Watmo. A challenge from Manley. Out goes Watmo. Leaps with Madai. Madai gets it back. Robertson pirouettes. 25 away from the line. Tackled by Rupira. Danger, danger, danger. Ballon to the 20, to the middle, behind one, to Lyon, inside ball, Menzies, Menzies gets it on, Orford, Watmo, a back, and then a freak, he's ball by Stewart for Madai, and Stephen Madai puts it over the line, they're going to investigate, but I think Manley have got their third try. That's just too good, that is too good, wow, danger, 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 but I didn't see it coming like that. Not sure why we're going upstairs. I guess the grounding. I thought the only doubt was was possibly a forward pass there from Watmo. We're going up to have a look at Steve Madai as to whether he gets the football down, which he does well and truly inside the corner post. I still think there's a doubt on the Watmo pass, but of course you don't go upstairs for that. And Manly get their third. And like last night, a killer blow landed just before the break. Oh, you could smell it. You, you could smell it with two minutes to go and the Warriors had the ball. You could see them looking at the clock and they just didn't do well enough with their set of six. And merely came roaring back. And by tackle three, they were in great attacking position and the Warriors were on their heels. But the finish of this is spectacular. We're not playing park football here. This is not playing with your mates in the park. Brett Stewart pulls out another pass of the century through his legs in a big final. This is to go through to the grand final, folks. And we'll just do a little bit of Harlem Globetrotters there and put Matt Eye in for the try. That's amazing. And Matt Eye still having a problem with that right arm. So we're not quite sure just what difficulties he was experiencing, but he has scored a try and that will relieve the pain somewhat. Melbourne would be watching this and right now it is a scintillating manly performance. Matt Orford having an uncomfortable time in preparing for the kick. He's right in front of the New Zealand contingent. This time wide again. So three kicks for Orford and three times he's missed. 12 nil at half time. Three unconverted tries for the Eagles. The final try, what a try. So Manly about to take us into the second half off the boot of Matt Orford. They are leading 12 nil. Is that enough to get them home to the grand final? which will be a repeat of 2007. Or will this team, the New Zealand Warriors, come from behind again to win? It's with Michael Luck as they go through the processes of the first set. And it's played there by Manory. This is Tua Mavavi. He makes a hole every time he runs. Now Hohaya. Just over the halfway line. And they managed to get there on four tackles. So it's been a very, very good set for them. Now for Tua Mavavi, 32 metres out from the Manly line. And this is Witt who puts a kick in, a stabbing kick. And both Stewart and Williams 
put a cordon around it, bodyguarding the ball, making sure it finds the touchline. Well, opening sets of six don't come any better than that. You start the second half, you've had a good talk at half time with your coach, you know you've got to be first to score, you've got to get on the front foot, and they just rumbled the ball forward, got it down the other end of the field, found touch two metres out from the opposition line. They've come out to play. Manly then with their response. And it's Steve Bell playing 12 metres out from his line. Ballin for Matai, and he runs hard and runs with Fien and Rapira. Ricky and Price, the starting props, still on the benches. The ball is played just outside the 30 metre line by Watmo. Decoys running towards the blind side as they go just to the right of the ruck for Josh Perry. And then for Mark Bryant. And Bryant is met by Tuod Mavavi and Mannering. Almost on the halfway line. Porter with the kick down to McKinnon. Shane Hayden warning a couple of the Manly players that they're offside, stay out the 10. And now he gives a penalty to New Zealand. I've called, I've called move and then you've turned around. Yeah, but you've still got a responsibility to move. So Shane Hayden penalising Josh Perry there. And now called move or movement. And you just stayed there. Perry said, I couldn't hear you. You don't have to be able to hear is what Shane Hayne is saying. You've got a responsibility to know the rules yourself. No when the tackle really has been completed. Here's Rapira playing the ball near the 30 metre line. Nathan Fien running to the short side before turning it in for Logan Swan. Ohio in 14. Michael Luck in 13. Taking it towards the middle of the park and is met by Mark Bryan and by Stephen Menzies. Ohio again. Up the middle goes Ohio and a diving tackle from Menzies. To the 10 metre line then on the fourth play. Now it's Witt who goes back and quick hands McKinnon away to Rapati. Rapati pulled down inches away from the line on tackle number five. Now it's from Vatavai down low at the feet of Paul Witt. He then stops, puts a kick across the ground. The tape goes up, the ball gets deflected back into the end goal. It's with Brett Stewart and it's a line drop out Manly. And they're blowing up. Manly saying that it came off the New Zealanders. Dollar. A sheepish look from Brent Tate. Watching. And it's Brent Tate's hand for sure. No. It's Brent Tate's hand for sure, Pete. No doubt. That's why they were blowing up. It's changed now. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, there was no chance of merely taking that line drop out he knocked it on. until the referee had got a chance to look at those replays. They were never, ever going to kick that ball. They wanted to make sure the video referee had plenty of time. Right there. Right there. I know you say you got the right result, but I don't like it. Bryant. Inside their own 20-metre line with Josh Perry. Taking it out towards the centre of the ground. As Ballon waits, Glenn Stewart's away to the right. Here is Glenn Stewart running it at Mannering. And Simon Mannering, as I mentioned earlier, voted Player of the Year for the Warriors. As Jamie Lyon puts a kick in that almost plugs. And it's McKinnon on Williams, and Williams on McKinnon! He passes, he passes again! And Rapati is eventually hammered. Oh, somebody pick Ivan Cleary up off the floor. How did they get away with that? McKinnon first and Vatavai second. Ivan Cleary will be on the floor. Resuscitation, please. So Logan Swan is able to unload. Brent Tate away for Ohio. And Lance Ohio is spinning and reeling and almost being thrown down the ground. Strap yourselves in, folks. The Warriors aren't going to die wondering here. There's Tate. Tackled low by Stephen Bell. Back to the right side for Kieran Mavave. 
You can always guarantee he'll find you seven or eight meters. Repera, then away for Nathan Feen. High down to David Williams. That might have come off that of I. 20. And it did. So back to the 20. He's off the back. And there is Cleary. He's been resuscitated. A couple of suicide passes. They appeared. Well, it's been a good six minutes again for the Warriors, except on the scoreboard. Been down this end of the field. Rapier is the man. If he can get the offload, he's got a brilliant right arm offload. Manly doing a good job in defence against him at the moment. Steve Maddow running at Brent Tate. And Tate accommodates him and puts him down on halfway. Brett Stewart to Brent Kite. And Kite is tackled by Rapira. And now it's Ballon. Short side play. No, he decides to take it himself up through the middle. Between the markers who were splitting and Logan Swan made the tackle. Now Jamie Lyon. He goes up. Up goes McKinnon. Up goes Jamie. Gets it away for Orford. And Orford, would you believe, has scored for Manly. Their fourth try. Jamie Lyon, magnificent. Wonderful work from Jamie Lyon. And that's been the big difference in Manly's play so far in this game. But that man on screen getting congratulated has actually kicked the football more than Matt Orford. It's always been a pretty much plan A with Matt Orford kicking, not too many other options. Well, now with Lyon back in the team, he's taken on extra responsibility. One on one here with Wade McKinnon. Both players, eyes on the ball, never taking it off. And, and Lyon gets above McKinnon on his way down, flicks it up to, to Matt Orford. Great try, Manly. Still too early to call to use an election coverage question. Too early to call. It's going to be 18 nil with about 31 to go. Back live at the Sydney Football Stadium for the conversion. The simplest of the night for Matty Orford. He'll be happy he's got one between the sticks. Matty Johns. Uh, Rabbits, this man's in great form since he's come back from injury. He makes a huge difference to Orford. Have a look at this. 50-50 contest. But the man with more desire comes up with the ball. Great play. Great play. Coming to you, Dutchie. We've seen this happen a couple of times with Manly, and normally the number one plays some kind of a part, Brett Stewart. We've seen it with the Roosters. It's a, a, something that Braith and Astor has done successfully a couple of times through the year. Gus was talking about the men at the back. They fly high knowing they've got the, the safety net of a penalty if they're tackled up there. But sometimes they drop their guard against... An aerialist coming down the ground, also contesting the same ball in the air. Well, if you can get one-on-one -on -one like that, it's a good ball from Glenn Stewart to Steve Bell, and he gets him away. The chaser, the kicker, has the advantage because he's got the momentum. Speaking of momentum, talking it's always Michael. Michael. And it's Manley's momentum. It's Jamie Lyon finds the line. Down on the 40-metre line, the Warriors end. Henderson is down around the legs. Looking more and more like Manly v Melbourne. This is Bryant. And the contest will have many new faces compared to last year. Line. Glenn Stewart will score for Manly. New Zealand are rocking and rolling now. The Peninsula, it just moved. Well, he's having a night, Jamie Lyon. Been in two beaten grand final teams, Parramatta back in 2001. And, of course, Manly last year. Lovely ball on the fringe to Glenn Stewart. Stewart has played some 5-8 through this season. 
It gives them great versatility on the edge of the ruck. Well, just a little straighten from Jamie Lyon. The hole opened up on his shoulder, and he held it, held it, and put the, the number 13 through. That's the second time they've played inside Jerome Rapati. If you remember, Brett Stewart went through that exact hole in the first half. Now his brother, Glenn Stewart, goes through the same hole in the second half. Now, several weeks ago, I was invited to go and speak at Steve Menzies' tribute night. And you get a feel about a club sometimes, that they believe it's their time. And the feeling I got that night in a very crowded room with a lot of people there to support Steve Menzies was that Manly believed this was their time. 12 months they've been smarting over that grand final loss last year. They've still got 28 minutes to survive here. But you've got the feeling they're on a mission. And they have started this second half as though they're ready to complete it. Off it again. Just pushing it away. Across the face of upright. Comment on the sideline, Laurie Daly. Yeah, they're a very good side, Manly. They're playing some terrific football tonight. Down their left edge, it's a real power game with Matt Eye and Watmo. But when they play down the right, that's their side where they like to use the football and play with skill. Jamie Lyon, but on this occasion, usually it's Glenn Stewart passing the ball. But he just hits the hole off line and goes across the scores. A fantastic try. And the crowd, well, they've just been very supportive of this club all season. Yeah, that... Uh... That movement of the peninsula, you might have thought it was an earthquake over there, but it wasn't, it was just the roar coming from the Sydney Footy Stadium. It was a nice shot, that one, wasn't it? The crowd up was one. Oh, he's, he's got some great pictures supplied to him, uh, directed by our cameraman over the last two or three weeks. And a wonderful shot. Capturing the moment. Here's Robertson, capturing the attention of the Kiwis at the moment. Tackle just inside touch. Go, go, go. Tackle by Tate and Kurt. Now Watmo challenges, and Nathan Fiend waits and puts him down. From Ballard to Orford, and Orford just crosses the 40-metre line. So just the one goal, but one try for Matt Orford. As Jamie Lyon again puts it on the boot, and it goes down into the end goal. It should roll away. So 22 to nil is the score. And this fellow... Just on camera from Emma Jamie Lyon having a, a wow of a game. Des Hasler, of course, he's been to grand finals and he knows what it's like to win for man. Still 27 minutes to go here. They've got to concentrate for the full limit. They may feel as though they've got this one and probably have. But they don't want to take a poor 28 minutes into next week's grand final either. They've got to keep playing what's in front of them and not worry about the scoreboard and the clock. Gus, I do think that's one area they have improved in this year. I think they've been more ruthless in this situation. I guess what we've seen in the last 25 minutes is that pass ruled forward. Michael Witt disagrees. And this is the beauty too. Like when you're 22 points in front, you know your opposition's under pressure. This is sudden death football. Loser leaves the country. Well, I shouldn't say that because they come from New Zealand. Loser leaves town. <laughs> and, you know, they're the ones under pressure. And they're going to come up with little errors like this, provided you stand your ground and don't make it easy for them. And that's what Manly have got to do. They've, got to, they've really got to grind the Warriors into the turf here so that their team song at the end of this really belts out nice and strong and Melbourne can hear them coming. Play by Williams. Off the back to the middle for Bryant. Then final day coverage uh, tomorrow week on 9. Again, live and exclusive. Early kick starts, from Orford, sorry, right? It starts at 11. And here's a chase on McKinnon. Reaping a harvest. Oh, that's exactly what you're talking about. That is exactly what the coach would want. What they're saying to the Warriors is, we're not going to take our foot off the pedal. The early kick from Orford showed that we're going to play the game at the other end of the field. Watch the chase here. Firstly, Bell to make McKinnon go sideways. McKinnon's got no option to run upfield. He's got to go sideways. He beats him, but that gives the other Manly players time to get there and round him up. And it was the front row of Kite who made the ground. He's a real athlete, isn't he, Brent Kite? 
Peter Strange out there for his, his first action tonight. There's Menzies. Steve looking to offload Logan Swan and Henderson making the tackle. This is Lestrange. As he goes back for Jamie Lyon. Inside ball for Glenn Stewart. Uh, Stewart. He shrugs Henderson away. And he'll play the ball eight metres away from the line. Stewart, slow to rise. Lestrange over to Kite. And Kite is three metres out from the line on the fourth tackle. Lestrange again. A decoy Bryant has gone off and off. Menzies had it. It came off his hands, went forward and hit one of the New Zealanders, Brent Tate, knock on. Steve Menzies was looking for just a quick little pass back on the inside here to Brett Stewart. He was looking to get that around the corner, and he couldn't quite juggle it in time. Brett Stewart scores untouched. Watch this. He grabs it. He knows Stewart's there. He tries to grab it and pass in the one motion and couldn't quite get it away. And Poor old Beaver. Hang on, wait for the whistle, wait for the whistle. Manly wanting to make a replacement. They want to get Glenn Stewart off. He just twisted a little ankle there. They couldn't make a change at the scrum. This is Rupati. Now Henderson. Now Tate. And held by Lestrange and Kite. Five tries. An awesome performance tonight by Manly. Starting props have been back now for about five minutes. Stephen Price and Ruben Wicky. And as you can see, Glenn Stewart has just left the field, picked up a bit of an injury there. We've got a report on that. He's going straight up into the, the dressing room with a limp. Fiend across. Dummy the first, gave it the second. And Ruben Wicky is with the ball. Talk that he may make himself available for their pop. Fiend gets a kick away under pressure. And Brett Stewart comes back. He sees an opening and tries to go through it, but they close it. On the 40 metre line. What move? Coming from the right and going towards the short side to link up with Matter. That didn't eventually. Swan it was who made the tackle on halfway. The strain for Hall. Hall met and put down eventually by. It's Mannerin, the 11. To the right side, to Kite. And he's tackled and put away by Price and Witt. To the 30 metre line, then Manley. Away from Jamie Lyon, he goes across, and he picks up Orford! Orford is tackled on the 20-metre line. Gaps appearing. Orford, an ankle problem. Play back to Lestrange. Now for Lyon, he puts a kick in. What goes after it, but it'll go dead. It's always difficult when you make that little half break and they grab you around both ankles, and Orford there, I think he feels a little bit better. He's walking it off. He taps the trainer and says, yeah, all clear. He'll run this out. When they get you down low like that and you're twisting, it's always a nervous time. And he thought the worst, but he's okay now. There's Tate beating Orford. Matai and Robertson making the tackle, and Orford gamely came in as the third man in the tackle. This is Kirk. Uh, Laurie Daly, sideline. If Manly are going to go on and win this game, as it looks like they will, they can ill afford to get injured. Glenn Stewart left to go up the tunnel. They believe it may be a slight hamstring strain. It's Tate. Just, hey, Brent Tate will play the ball on halfway. Here. Taken down by Bryant and Watmo. To the left side for Ruben Wicky. Just outside the 40 metre line. Five tackles gone. To the short side. And Fiend it is that puts the ball high down to Brett Stewart. Menzies was trying to give him some cover. And I just looked at Menzies. I thought for a moment he might have done some damage as he fell. They didn't miss Steve Menzies. Unfortunately, Brett Stewart was running away 30 metres upfield. Here's Bryant. He didn't jump that time either, young Brett. He stood his ground. Not like the first half there with a the Merler one. I'm just thinking two rabbits. This Manly and Melbourne confrontation over the last couple of years. They eye each other off. Last night, Melbourne won 28-0 against the Sharks. They blotted them out. I, I would, would imagine it's probably on their mind to do the same thing, just to answer in kind. He's offered with an inside pass for Robertson. To the kick. 
Goes across towards Williams, but Vanavai is there and he lands in the field of play. He'll be instructed to play the ball. Orford is still in quite a bit of pain. Eight changes made by Manley, seven made by the Warriors. And this is Hohaya. Orford on camera. Rapati. And it's a penalty going to the Warriors. Inside the 10 is the ruling. And with that little injury that Matt Orford has picked up, the, the player is usually the best judge. He knows what the pain feels like. They know their bodies pretty well. And he seems content to want to play on with it and just run it out. So I'd, I'd suspect it's not all that serious. Otherwise he'd be looking for the sideline. Price. Accommodated there by Lestrange and Bryant. His man are in. And now New Zealand 35 metres away from the line as Henderson runs across and links up. And Wiki! Wiki gets rid of one! Looks around for support! And he's taken down there by Orford, who is really struggling at the moment. But here's Henderson! And they bounce him around. There was no tackle completed. It's play on for Lance Hohaya. He goes across wide to Vatavai. Vatavai looks at Rapati. He's offside. He has to hold the ball. Then he gets it away to Mannering. Mannering to Tate. And Tate is with the ball. He gets it away. Back to Rapati. Rapati and Bell. They do the dance. And Rapati is tackled. By Menzu. Now it's Stephen Price. Three metres out from the line. Tackled by Mark Bryant. Here is a kick from Finn, and it is forced in goal by Bryant, line dropper. Yeah, good attack there by the Warriors, but equally desperate defence by Manly. You need to be quicker on them ones in here. That's exactly what we saw from the Melbourne Storm last night. They had a comfortable lead, but refused to give up ground. Wiki bursting into the backfield there, they covered up nicely, regrouped in defence. And now they've got a little bit more to do. We've got a line drop out. The Warriors are going to come back searching for a try. But I really think this nil score line will be something Manly want to keep intact. Jamie Lyons kick to McKinnon, 40 metres out. McKinnon tries to split them, got a ball away, but it's gone to ground. To that of all. Glenn Hall involved here. Funnily enough, the pass was on before before Wade McKinnon found the defensive line. It's just the support player arrived a touch late and forced McKinnon to have to try and beat the tackle. And the pass is on there, but McKinnon is forced to go through the gap because Vatavai just arrived a touch late for his liking. So it's Manly winning the scrum, and Matai is the first tackle. Glenn Stewart coming back with a concerned look on his face. His sloppy ball is picked up by Kite. He plays it for Lestrange. It goes to Hall, and he runs it at Wiki and Mannering. Out comes the ball. There was no steal. I take it. As it's come back now to Michael Witt. No, he tried to pass that Glenn Hall. Oh, stand up. Just inside the 40-meter line. As Tate goes away to Madalena. We've got just over 15 minutes to go. 22-0. And the Warriors Now, they may as well play with their band. There's Tate, a brand of football that they enjoy, a brand of football that they have to produce now. And this pass goes to ground, and he's ruled there's been lots of the football and it's gone forward, Manley is challenging the, the ruling from home. So at the end of 26 competition rounds, there were three equal leaders in the competition. Manly, the Storm and the Cronulla Sharks. The Storm had a positive for and against of something like 302 points. Manly was around about 290-odd. 
And the Sharks were back on 67. I mean, when you really look at it, these two teams have been clearly dominant over all other rivals all year. And now that we've got to the second last weekend, it looks as though they're proving it beyond all doubt. And it's going to come down to them as a test for the title. Oh, good work by Lestrange and Menzies, and now it's out to Matai. Matai gets it away, the fine Michael Robertson. Here comes the defence, it'll be too late. They take an air swing, and Michael Robertson has scored Manley's sixth try of the night. He's the Maroon and Whites again skywards. He might not carry the profile of some of his teammates, but he's been an absolute wonderful acquisition from Canberra. A flyer, Michael Robinson, and durable. 70 odd games now in succession since making his debut for Manly back in 2006. And he's got good speed. He's got speed to burn. Well done, Steve Maddai, attracting two defenders. Then it's a foot race between McKinnon and Robertson, who used to carry the beard. It's gone. Might have made him a bit quicker as well. Well, just trying to compare the two performances from last night and tonight. This has been blinding. This has been just exciting from from Manly and I'm wrestling with the thought that Melbourne are going to have awful trouble trying to handle handle Manly back live at the stadium the footy stadium right in the heart of Sydney and Steve Maddai will take the kick for conversion of the try scored by Michael Robertson yeah well, he's got that ankle problem so Maddai takes over it'd be something if he converts this and we don't have another point scored in the game wouldn't it yeah, it certainly would. 28 minutes it was last night. That yeah. man on screen, Steve Maddai, if you remember in the first half, was having awful trouble with his right arm. Look at how tough and courageous these footballers are. Which arm is he passing with there? The right arm. He puts his body into the line, pushes through, and with the right arm, the one that's been hanging by his side all match, injured, he gets the pass away to Robertson to score. They're so courageous, these first-grade footballers. Don't let anyone tell you. But a first grade footballer isn't tough. So 12 minutes of the game remaining, and Mannering went in awkwardly and he paid the penalty as he tried to tackle Jason King. Now it's Glenn Hall, and Matt Orford has succumbed. And Ballon has gone back out there. Matt Ballon has gone into the dummy half position at the moment. Pushing the strange out to first receiver. Played there by Kidding, and it's gone to Jamie Lyon. Kicking it down to Manu Vadavai. And it comes back to be tackled by Steve Menzies and Heath Lestrange. First tackle, 28 nil in favour of Manley. Which is obviously a, a dominant performance from Manley, but hey, last night Cronulla contributed to their own demise to a large degree. Tonight, I believe the Warriors have played as well as they've been allowed to play. And they haven't been poor tonight, the Warriors. They've just never got into this game because Manly haven't allowed them to. There's Matt Alino tackle. What's the story on Matt Orford, Laurie Daly? Yeah, he's hurt his left ankle in that tackle, but they don't believe it's too serious. I think they've just taken him off for precautionary measures. Glenn Stewart, OK? Yeah, he's fine. All right, so it's... Ohio who puts up a skyscraper and it's taken by David Williams. He beats the party. He then basically shovels Ohio out to the 30 meter line. Gee, he's a good player. What a point he is. What more? Now Matter beats Tate with a left arm send and then he goes into space. Matter! In a brave performance, he finds Brett Stewart. Stewart's heading for the corner. He'll make it. He scores again. His second try of the night. Try 92 for Mr. Magic. Well, a bit of magic from Steve Maddai as well. A noted defender, but this year his footwork has been a real feature of his game. The attacking part of his play has really come out. 
and he did very, very well here. Got through, somehow slipped the pass to Brett Stewart. And that man had quick men chasing him. Anthony Watmo gets the ball to Matoy, comes back in field, gets rid of Brent Tate. Through the gap beats Wiki. And now some nice work here. He's going to kick at one stage, slipped it to Stewart, and then bang, the afterburners just too quick. What speed. Spare a thought for Wade McKinnon. Michael Robertson breaks into the backfield. And he's like Greaves Lightning. McKinnon did everything he could, just couldn't get there in time. The bolt of Lightning had struck and gone, and then within five minutes, Stewart does the same, basically. Well, Stephen Maddai, if you're giving awards for bravery, We've got to give it to him tonight. Now he takes over the goal kicking, and that left the boot OK. But just a while. I've said this a number of times this year, Rabbits. You know, if you could give me one thing in the football team, if I could have one commodity guaranteed, it would be speed. And Brett Stewart just epitomises that. What he can do for your team because of his sheer speed. Now, this is a half chance at best. I mean, Matt Ike goes back in field. What's the anticipation here of Stewart? He gets out of his way, now follows him, backs up, waits, gets it, leaps over, and now says, catch me if you can. Whoosh out. Speed. I love speed. A little bit of hurdling involved there as well. Over the first obstacle and then away he went. On the flat, he was far too fast. Well, that's Orford. Well, the feet of Orford. The ankles of Orford. That's a throw-off. They don't want the opposition to know which one's crook. And a knock-on will be ordered against Robertson. The ice man. That's the old trick. You put ice on both of them so the opposition doesn't know which is the crook one. Crowd tonight, 32,095. So that's up about 5,000 on last night. Big, big contingent of, uh, of Kiwi support here tonight. Few holes, I might add, in the ranks over there, that area where they were stationed. There's a few vacant patches there now, because Manley took them out of the equation with a, an unbelievably blinding performance. Played by McKinnon. And that is Mannery with a, a don't argue run. Taken down by Jamie Lyon, who has been superb tonight. And now Stephen Price reeling and spinning and getting it to Rapira. And then a little jug, a little bobble. But it's allowed to go. He was able to recapture before it hit the ground, did Nathan Field. The 15 is Chua Mavavi through Field. The 14 is Ohio. It's gone away to Rapati. He calls Vatavai on the inside. Vatavai responds and then tries to go again. He does that. He hops over the 10 metre line. He's holding them at bay and still trying his damnedest to get it over that white line, which is four metres away. Now a catch and pass McKinnon, and the Kiwis are coming down to the 10-metre line. It's back to Kirk. Kirk gets it over the 10-metre line and will play the ball. A zero tackle. They didn't know oh. that. Oh. player has been taken out by a shoulder. Well, don't take him out. He didn't have the ball. And he didn't have the ball. You heard it from the referee. I thought for a moment he was talking about a shoulder charge on the head of a player, but that was not the case. He was talking about a shoulder charge on a player not in possession. That was the reason for the penalty. Jason King it was who put the big shoulder into it. Just on the try line. Played for Henderson. To go back and wide, or higher, on to McKinnon, McKinnon, Rapati, Rapati comes back, he picks up Mannering, Mannering running over the 10 metre line. Tackle was cut. Henderson, then Price, hit, spin, got it away, Fien into the in goal! Kirk! Kirk, I think, has got it! <laughs> Tackle four! He oh, took it easy here, the captain. Right? Unfolded beautifully. Nice pass from Steve Steve Price. 
like the one that Mark Bryant threw earlier in the game that led to a try, got the outside defenders to come in. And the pass would have been equally as good to Schrader Kirk here, but they, they kick it through. He puts the foot down, then he just waits to see where the ball's going to go. And, well, we'll get a better angle of it, but you'd think he scored. And he has. Well, he was almost out of the field of play. He was out where the linesman should be, just minding his own business. The play was unfolding inside him, and Aidan Kirk was standing out there wide. Suddenly they kicked the ball, and he thought, that's mine. And he's picked himself up a finals try. So the Warriors grab their only points of the game after 75 minutes and Ivan Cleary thinks about the season in retrospect thinks about was it fair to get this sort of a hiding in the penultimate match well it, it's a dejected Ivan Cleary obviously but you know, they came in in eighth place they had to beat Parramatta in the final round round 26 to to get there so it's actually been su three sudden death matches in a row for his side Again, we spoke about after the, the Cronulla Can uh, Canberra game where Adrian Pertell couldn't take a, an intercept early in that match, which would have got Canberra off on the right foot. You just wonder if Vatavai had have scored in the opening five minutes. Uh, Manly probably still would have been too good, but getting a start like that is a, it's a wonderful way to go in your finals and settle it, things down for you. Great kick. Wonderful kick from Hohaya. It'll be a sad play right home. Earlier tonight, the Warriors Toyota Cup team, the under-20s team, led the Broncos virtually all night. And I can tell you with three minutes to play, they led by eight points. The Warriors, uh, the Broncos scored a converted try. And I can tell you the last play of the game, the Warriors led with five seconds to go. And the Broncos kicked on fifth tackle. The ricochet landed back in a player's hands who unloaded and put a teammate under the post. And the Warriors under 20 side was bundled out of a grand final berth. So both sides just falling one game short. And I think that's a pretty successful year for their club. Under 20s and first grade think, for the second last weekend. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Gus. I just wanted to endorse that about their under 20s. The state of the situation with the Warriors is healthy. I've, I've only watched a, a few under-20 games, but the Warriors team is very, very good. There's some talent. Sonny Fly was running around. He's had a lot of first grace. Young front row called Russell Packer. They are a very good side, and they're quite healthy in that junior rank. And look at this for sheer determination. The game well and truly gone, and it was the big number 12, Madalino. Well, I think... Probably was nearly eligible for the Toyota Cup, or did he play Toyota Cup? He was the young player of the year for the Warriors. You mentioned Simon Mannering, player of the year. And Ben Madalino, he got the basically junior award. And I guess what we're all saying here is congratulations, Warriors, from from tip to toe. You've done you've done very well this year. I know this will be hard to swallow tonight. That's why I said it's almost unfair to see them beaten like this. As the ball goes over the touchline with Vatavai trying in vain to keep it alive. Well, last year in the finals, they qualified top four. They lost their first semi to Parramatta and then went up and played on an extremely hot day in North Queensland and got absolutely blown away. And I actually travelled with them on the plane back to Brisbane that night. And I've never seen a more dejected bunch, coaches and players alike. But they've come back and brushed up OK this year. And as we said, with that younger side, that two out of cup side, you would have to think the future is pretty bright. He's done a great job, Ivan Cleary. A wonderful job, in fact. Not easy travelling from New Zealand to Sydney every second week of the year. Not only coming to Sydney, but then off to Brisbane or Newcastle, Canberra, down to Melbourne, out to Penrith. A lot of travel involved for this side. It's not easy work. Steve Maddow plays it on the 30-metre line. And here's a fan from Watmo. Just repeating that grand final coverage starts at 11, live and exclusive on 9 next Sunday, tomorrow week. And uh, it starts at 11 with the footy show and uh, takes you through the VB Premier League, followed by the Toyota Cup, followed by, of course, the Telstra Premiership final. The pre-game entertainment will start at half past four.
and uh, the big game will start at five o'clock in New South Wales. And Ruben Wicky, I wonder what's going through his mind. That is the boo, as we pointed out, 1993. We believe we'll finish up tonight, although he may play test football. And Logan Swan, the number 17 out there tonight, will leave the Warriors. He's had two stints with them. We'll finish up tonight playing just behind Stacey Jones with the amount of games played for the Warriors. He's in pretty good company, Logan Swan. Now, Peter, Raymond, we've seen both grand finalists 24 hours apart, the Melbourne Storm and Manly. Have you got an early tip? Have you got a preference? Well, I suppose age better go before beauty. I'm totally impressed with Manly. I would say my tip's got to be Manly. Got to be Manly. Oh, look, to be honest, I'm, I'm happy to go along and watch him go around next week, and I'll, I'll be the diplomatic. I'll, I'll, I mean, as long as the better team wins on the day, I'll be happy. It's just a wonderful confrontation, and it is the one we probably expected throughout most of the season. Who referees? Shane Hayne or Tony Archer? Archer. Oh, Tony Archer. Here's Henderson. Right in the middle of the ground. 40 seconds of the season remaining for the New Zealand Warriors. There's Hasler going down to greet his players. They'll be wrapped in what they've done. Chuma Bobby, an unload to ground and a knock-on has been found by Shane Hayne. He'll go to the press conference, Desi Hasler, he'll say they're flying under the radar. They've got a Still tough game next week, man. Still Real going. Melbourne are a very good side. You know, we're just here battling and doing our best. What a great job he's done. Manly were gone, dead and buried five years ago. No club. Max Del Mage, Des Hasler, and a, a host of Manly faithful have held it all together and got them back. And now two grand finals in a row. They're 80 minutes away from maybe a victory lap. 87 and 96, he played in winning grand final sides as he played 287 first grade games. The siren is there. Manly are into the grand final. It is exit for New Zealand Warriors at the back of a tremendous season for them and for their under 20s. But for Manly, they will revisit ANZ Stadium, the Olympic Stadium, and have another shot at the defending Premier's Melbourne.